On a June 21st, 2016 episode of Clyde Lewis's Ground Zero Radio, a man named Richard claimed that he had a very strange run-in with some men in black. Even though the incident occurred in 1979, when he was only 11 years old, Richard remains oblivious as to why it happened. He recalled how, at the time, he had just ridden his bike home from school. His mother was out and his father was at work. He was playing in his front yard when a black Lincoln pulled up across the street from his house. He watched as four men got out. Three of them were identical in height and looks. The fourth was shorter and heavier set. All four were dressed in black suits, black ties, black hats, and white dress shirts underneath. The four men looked at Richard and then began making their way across the street in his direction. Richard did not recognize them and for some reason he became almost instantly frightened. He dropped his bike and ran into the house. He quickly dialed up his dad and told him that four men were coming to his house and that he was scared. His dad insisted that he lock the door and go downstairs. He also instructed Richard to get his gun and hide behind the TV in the basement and that he would leave work and be there soon. His workplace was only about 11 minutes away so Richard knew that it wouldn't be long. I ran down the stairs and I had a 30-30 and I knew where the ammunition was. I got down and from downstairs I could look at the back door. I remember looking and I could see their figures but not their faces clearly and then it was very bright. And the next thing I remember was hearing my dad come through the door yelling my name and I was downstairs behind the TV. The rifle had been unloaded. There were no bullets in the rifle. It was to the side of me and I have no memory of what transpired in the 11 minutes between when I made the phone call and when my father came through the door. Richard claims that the encounter still haunts him to this day. I have a dream about them every year or two and I remember every single detail of their coming, of their getting out of the car, crossing the street. They didn't even look. They didn't even look when they crossed the street. They just walked straight across. As hard as I try, I can't remember anything beyond that. I remember their figures in the door, two of them, the small one and a taller one, and then a bright light. Next thing I remember, I was laying on my back and the gun was propped up like I had set it up and there were no bullets in that gun. I found it interesting that Richard claims he saw a flash of light and then was unable to remember anything else about the visit. Paranormal researcher John Keel sometimes spoke of people who encountered MIBs who too observed a flash of light which rendered them unable to remember certain aspects of the visit. Of course, this little detail was incorporated into the movie, The Men in Black. In 1984, a woman named Linda claims that her home was visited by four people, two men and two women, dressed in black suits and black sunglasses one afternoon. She remembered hearing a knock and looking outside to see the four standing at the door. Something about them seemed off. Linda had trouble looking at them, like it was hazy and she became quite unnerved by this. She could see that they were carrying briefcases and there appeared to be a black car, like a Crown Vic, the kind used by police forces, sitting across the street. She assumed it was the car they drove up in, but she never saw them exit the vehicle. I asked them if I could help them and they said that they were looking for my sister. I told them she wasn't there at the moment and I told them if they wanted to leave a message, I would let her know. I wanted to know who they were and they told me they were from Avon. Linda sensed that whomever these people were, they certainly were not from Avon. Then Linda watched as one of them walked around to the back of the house. She assumed that they were looking for something but had no idea what that something could be. That's when things got even weirder as Linda could not recall any details about how they left. They were simply gone. She remembered watching the man go to the back of the house and that's it. The people and their car were gone. This vanishing act by MIBs has been described by numerous other witnesses. Probably one of the most well-known accounts of this came from actor Dan Aykroyd, who claims he watched as a car carrying an MIB vanished on a busy street in New York. Popular YouTuber Sunny Ale, in a video titled Aliens Exist, published on February 2nd, 2016, claims that she and her sister observed a very strange sight in California in the early 2000s when she was around seven or eight. Sunny L claims that one day she and her sister, who was around her age, had gone out to the garage to play. The garage was next to a long and thin alleyway behind their house. On this particular day, when the two sisters entered the garage, they immediately heard what sounded like people talking in the alley. 
Sonny and her sister found this strange as almost nobody used that alley. Curious as to what was going on, they peeked around the corner of the garage into the alley. There they observed a large number of people standing around talking. Sonny guessed that there was between 50 and 75 of them, all dressed in black suits and standing near a big black limousine. Sonny also claims there was something else there, something that, to her, looked like an alien, as seen in popular culture. My alley, like the alley behind my house, is narrow, but long, so it was like, of all the places, why would people be here? My first thought was maybe they're filming. Maybe a guy's dressed up in this alien costume to do maybe a scare or something. Who knows? My first thought wasn't like, oh, it's an alien, you know. I thought it was just someone playing around. So the moment my sister and I looked, we saw this and we thought it was so funny, we went back into the middle of the garage and giggled. We looked at each other and laughed it off. From there, the situation would take a very disturbing turn as Sonny and her sister decided to take another look at the crowd of people. She remembered that just before looking around the corner, it seemed to get deathly quiet. When they peered around the corner, Sonny and her sister observed that the crowd had collectively stopped and were now staring directly at the two sisters. A sinister stare that immediately sent a cold chill through them. Like all of them, all of them, just staring at us. We were like, this is where my sister and I got creeped out. I remember being creeped out. And this is where my sister and I go back into the middle of the garage. What happened next would leave Sonny and her sister scratching their heads. It only takes like five footsteps to go into the middle of the garage. It only takes like three seconds to be in the middle of the garage. We go in there and we're just like, oh my god, what did we just see? Why are they staring at us like that? Super scary. We decided to check it out one more time. We were not going to stop checking it out. We're nosy like that. So the third time we go to check it, one more time, everyone and everything is gone. Gone. It only takes like five seconds to go to the edge of the garage and to be able to see everyone in the alley that we did see. I told you, my alley is narrow but long. 50 to 75 people in a limo. It would take more than five seconds for someone and everyone, everyone there and car vanished. A big ass car to leave this alley like snap a finger. Everyone was gone. Sonny and her sister simply could not understand what they had seen and still to this day have no answers for it. It was like super weird. How did that even happen? I mean, how did that even happen? Mind blowing. It would take time to clear people from this alley, that many people from this alley with that big ass limo from this place and they would make noise because there was a lot of like pebbles and stuff in this alley. We would hear the tires on top of the little rocks. We could hear footsteps because we could hear everything because it was like a quiet place. You could hear everything and everyone and it would not take five seconds. Sonny is convinced that what she and her sister saw happened by accident. She believes that whatever was going on, she was not supposed to have seen it. It'd be interesting to find out if the two sisters had experienced any lost time or even if they had consulted a clock prior to entering the garage and after the group vanished to ascertain as such. So what was going on? What would 50 to 75 black suited men, a black limousine and a gray type alien be doing in an alley in broad daylight in California? Had Sonny and her sister observed a weird kind of MIB meetup? Curiously, this sighting of a large group of MIBs meeting up and dispersing is not that uncommon. In fact, in 1961, South Miami, Florida played host to just such an event, one that was witnessed by at least two police officers and a store clerk. It was March 6, 1961. A store clerk was closing up for the evening at around 10.15 p.m. He noticed that a large dark object was hovering about 100 feet over a tomato field at the rear of the building. To the man, it resembled a blimp, but it was much larger than any blimp that he had ever seen before. Even stranger, small lights, very much like St. Elmo's fire, were moving around the object while it was hovering. Thinking it incredibly odd, the man decided to call the police and notify them of the strange activity. Within minutes, a police cruiser arrived at the store. Two officers stepped out and the man led them to the rear of the building where they stood watching events unfold. At this point, the object had lowered to about 50 feet over the field. A large door opened in the center and three smaller objects emerged and flew off. Then, the three watched as the object began lowering two large oblong vertical capsules to the ground. In one cylinder, there were three large black Ford Galaxy sedans. Out the other cylinder, several men dressed in black business suits carrying black suitcases emerged. The men entered the cars, four to each car which then drove off the field towards U.S. Highway 1, 
Within minutes, the two cylinders either dissolved or were taken back into the craft as they were no longer visible. The store clerk's wife arrived in time to watch as the blimp-like object lifted into the air and flew off. The clerk and his wife and the two officers could not believe what they had seen. The officers were so frightened that they refused to pursue the cars, and when asked how they would fill out the report, they indicated that they hadn't seen a damn thing. They quickly returned to their cruiser and drove away. According to Norbert F. Garrity, who wrote about this bizarre case in issue 52 of Space Magazine, he claims that the officers did return the next day and found tire tracks in the tomato field. He further added that the store clerk, for whatever reason, did not keep his appointment with an investigator who had become alerted to the case. Had the store clerk been warned off talking about what he saw that night? October 27, 1991, Ufa, Russia. Motorist Andre S. watched as a strange dark object descended over a nearby field at around 9 p.m. Thinking it strange, Andre pulled over to the side of the road and flipped off his lights. He then watched as the object descended to a few meters above the ground. He was able to see that it was a disc-shaped craft with an upper convex section. On the bottom of the disc, a hatchway opened and a platform descended to the ground. Three figures emerged. Two of them looked odd, not human. They were dressed in silvery flowing outfits and dark tight-fitting trousers, the same color footwear with bright soles. The third figure was dressed like a normal person, blue jeans and a sleeveless black leather jacket. To Andre, he looked totally human, someone you would pass on the street and not pay any mind. At this point, a hatchway opened on the side of the craft and a luminous spear came out and descended about 10 meters to the ground. Then something flared up, and at the place where the sphere had descended, there was now a normal looking vehicle a Russian-made Zaguli. The human-type figure then walked into the vehicle and shouted at the other two, I will wait for you in August of 1994. He started the car engine, which sounded very loud, and drove down the highway. The other two alien figures then re-entered the disc, then the disc rocketed into the sky and vanished. I will wait for you in August of 1994. I found this statement interesting as it suggests that the human-looking entity would meet up possibly at a chosen spot to be picked up. Curiously, in both the Miami case and the Russian case, the drop-off appeared to be in a rural area, in a field, at night. This leads me to wonder if the departure also occurred in fields and at night. A truck driver named Ryan told Clyde Lewis about something strange he saw while driving transport in Arkansas several years ago. He claims that he was in a rural area at around 2 a.m. when something very peculiar happened. I was a trainer and about 2 o'clock in the morning my student, he woke up and he came through the curtain and he sat in the other seat and I said, what are you doing up? And he said, just all of a sudden I just couldn't sleep. And right about then I look up and it's a very rural area and there were no cars parked along the road, no houses, just forest. And somebody's standing on the white line on the freeway, you know, on the side of the road. And I clicked off the cruise control and I slowed down and started to move over into the left lane and there was a guy in a black suit. He was just standing there stock still looking out onto the freeway. It was just really strange and I have tried over the years to rationalize what that was and I haven't been able to. There was just nothing around out there. Nothing. Ryan claims that he was dressed in a black suit and that he reminded him of Agent Smith in The Matrix. The really strange part was I was kind of freaked out and kind of scared about it but my student, he was like... Maybe we should stop and see if he's okay. I said, I'm not stopping, and he was really insistent that we stop, and I finally said, when we get about two miles down the road, I'll pull over, I'll wait about an hour. If you're not back, I'm leaving. He kind of hushed up then. He had this crazy sense that he needed to go to this person. Both Albert Rosales and Leon Strickler have compiled similar reports of men dressed in black suits being sighted in and around rural roadways, seemingly waiting to be picked up. In June 2016, a number of news outlets began reporting on how people were encountering strange men dressed in black suits in southwest Iowa, generally along Iowa Highway 22 west of Muscatine. Some people believed that it was a prank, others thought it was some kind of weird promotional gimmick. Even today though, authorities have no idea who these men were and what they were doing. I have to wonder, because I'm weird like that, if June 2016, Iowa, was some kind of mass extraction event. I know it sounds crazy, but as with the case of the strange man in Russia, who said that he would wait for them in August 1994, maybe these strange men in black sightings in Iowa had something to do with a pre-arranged pickup date. Maybe the MIB sightings in Iowa over the course of that month weren't just random, but part of a much larger operation. I know, I know it's crazy, but 
As far as I know, the mystery of the Iowa Man in Black has never been solved. 